Okay, what's up, everyone? Welcome to another edition of the Victory Life Legacy Spotlight. I have two wonderful people with me today, my former teammate and longtime friend, my brother, uh, Hank Coleman, and his son, Henry Coleman, who is headed to Duke University to play a part of the Coach K program in the Brotherhood. Um, I'm excited about today. Um, this is not my first time interviewing Henry, but this is my first time having Henry and his dad, Hank, on together. And we're going to highlight their legacies and the impact they've had on their communities and in sports and, and talk about Henry's journey to ending up at Duke. So uh, let's start first. Let's start Hank and Henry. Um, before I get into your basketball stuff and, and, and Hank's, Hank's history as an athlete, Henry, I got to ask you, did you, were you aware, because I've known you since you were young, but, you know, I see you at the spring game and you were just trying to go watch the game. Were you aware uh, how good your dad was as an athlete? I mean, because let me just say this real quick before you answer that. I had three kids and my daughter is a standout volleyball player. She's 16 now. My son's 14. Trying to follow in your footsteps, Henry, as a basketball player. And... They look at me and you and they like, oh, man, you were trash or <laughs> you know, they don't understand. They, they, they look at it like, you know, they don't understand. But you know, I see the jerseys behind you. Did you know how good your father was coming up? Uh it wasn't until about middle school that I get a true understanding of, you know, how good he was and how he carried on his legacy at Virginia Tech. Um I had, you know, when I was younger, he used to just tell us a bunch of stories and you mentioned going up to the spring games. And for me, that was just, you know, going to just go see Virginia Tech play. Um, and it wasn't until really about middle school that I kind of realized how uh, good he was and how good those teams were uh, under me, under Beamer. So for me, it's just been an honor to kind of, you know, see what he did and what uh, other guys did throughout that um, time period. Absolutely. And just so you know, when I got to say, your father's a few years older than me, he was like my mentor. Um, I remember coming in, I was a uh, All-State offensive lineman, uh, All-American in some magazines and publications. And the moment I knew I was going to red shirt was I walked by the waiting room. We were, we were red shirts and freshmen, incoming guys. And I saw your dad power cleaning 350 pounds with no belt. <laughs> <laughs> I'd never seen anybody that strong, let alone anybody that light skinned that strong. I mean, I, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I knew your dad was about business and he helped me become a better player, man. He's part of one of the legendary defensive lines in Virginia Tech history. Hank, what people don't realize is you're from the 804, you're from Richmond. You were also a football and a basketball player, man. Uh, talk about your days playing high school football and, and basketball and, and what did you learn growing up? Well, I'll tell you, man, it was being at George with it was uh, it was different than most schools. Uh, you know, you had all the negative press there. But what people don't know um, is that we never had a home game. Uh, George uh -huh. with because it was in the inner city. All of our games were away. And um, I never forget, we went to play uh, Pitt in Pittsburgh, and one of the reporters asked me about uh, when I was at Tech, he said, you know, how do you feel playing at this university, you know, where people like uh, Dan Marino have played? <clears throat> and I said, well, it makes no difference to me because I, I always play the weight games in high school. So uh, <laughs> for me, it was just like, we're going to strap it on and, and get it done. And for me, that just taught me perseverance and overcoming different adversities. Uh, you know, our best season in high school for football was, I think, like seven and three. Mm. And we, never, we were never able to make it to the playoffs. And uh, it was just interesting <clears throat> because I've always told Henry, no matter where you play and who you play, always play at your best. And, man, for me, I started getting recruited because – other high school teams would use our video as their highlight film. And I never forget, oh. <laughs> I never forget the, uh, at that time, the coach for UCLA was visiting Henrico. And he said, hey, man, I don't mean to harm. He said, but I'm sitting here watching these kids from Henrico play against George Will. He said, but I keep seeing number two make all the tackles. And, I, you know, and that was me. And he said, well, where is this kid? He said, oh, he said, George Will. 
And so, man, it just it just taught me a lot again about being able to uh, really just play. Whenever you have opportunity to play, you never know who's watching, who's filming, and something that Coach Bing used to always say, <clears throat> you know, that the camera doesn't lie. No, it so, doesn't. No, so for me, man, that that was that was it for me, and I just tried to pass it on to Henry and just say, hey, no matter where you are, keep always play and uh, do your best. Yeah, and, and, and being that you were able to pass on, it's a unique perspective, being a student athlete who had offers and colleges interested in you. Um, I got to ask you this, Henry, because when I did the uh, feature on you on 247 Sports before you made your decision, I had people texting me, great feedback on the article. But then, of course, a lot of members of not just Hokie Nation, but just people who love college football was like, hey, bruh. Why did he not play football? <laughs> you know, um, can you talk about like I mean, because you, I, you know, your size obviously, you can play either sport. I mean, a lot like LeBron, you had that physical stature. Um, is it what got you? Even though your dad was a, a great player in football, what got you drawn to that court? And why didn't you play football? There, there are a lot of things that kind of went into it. But uh, growing up, I played a little bit of flag football. Uh, but my dad always told me, follow what you truly love. And so um, all the sports I played growing up, I was a really good baseball player. I played that for about five or six years. Uh, but it was what I realized kind of around when I was in sixth grade. Uh, we went to AAU Nationals down in uh, Hampton. Um, and it was kind of a life-changing thing. I really, like, knew that I wanted to be a basketball player, um, like, through college and hopefully – uh, professionally. Um, but for me also, it was growing up, a lot of guys around this area weren't, there weren't a ton of football players. Um, a lot of guys, we all played basketball and I used to go to the rec center, Humphrey Calder, uh, after school every day. And that's the only thing we did. We used to get our homework done and we were all playing basketball from like four to seven until our parents picked us up. So throughout elementary and middle school, that was really the only thing I did. So I just kind of found a love for that in that way. Yeah, um, and Hank, you know, hearing him talk about finding the love and falling in love with the game of basketball, what I remember about you, man, obviously I saw what you did throughout the week in practice and I saw what you and JC and Cornell did on Saturdays and even played with you. Um, did you pass on that work ethic and that intensity? Because I don't, you know, obviously your son didn't see you play he wasn't born yet, but like what I remember about you is you had a work ethic and a grind. Like, you know, it was fun off the field, but you were business. Like you didn't play around in the weight room on the field. Did you bring that to him and your other son, like that that mindset? Yeah, I think you know, as we went through the process, you know, I guess going back to even the football question was. You know, Henry had some friends that were playing football and where we were living now, still in the city, <clears throat> we didn't have a lot of programs. But then Henry started getting much bigger. And so he always wanted to play quarterback or, or wide receiver, which kind of broke my heart being a defensive guy, you know. And quarterback? I, and I, quarterback? Yeah. yeah. I mean, and so <laughs> it, was, it was funny, man, because I taught him the famous um, uh, Antonio Freeman hitch and go. And, oh, yeah. man, he, he was killing people on the flag football field. And it was just crazy. And I told him, I said, okay, I said, if you don't have an offer by the end of your freshman year in high school for basketball, I said, then you can go out for football. And, man, lo and behold, before his freshman year, he had an offer. Uh, wow. and, uh, ironically, it was Ace Custis who offered him um, and it just kind of blew my mind because I was like, well, what happens next? You know, I was like, this is crazy. Wow. Um, but for me, man, it was it was talking to Henry and his brother Leland, who's now about 6'4", six, 6'5", six, yeah. and years old. That's crazy. I saw the picture. It's bananas. And so, you know, what we talked about, I said, man, there's going to be a lot of people who can shoot, jump, and run. I said, but you have to figure out what's going to make you different. And, you know, what we started realizing was Henry was very competitive and he had this high motor. He just wouldn't stop. And it was at times I would have to tell him, look, you know, 
you can kind of slow down a little bit. He's like, no, I'm, I'm here. We're going to keep playing. Coach don't have to take me out of the game and, and all of that. And it, that just really, to me, showed his passion and commitment to the game. And, you know, for me and playing, I always felt like that was one of the things that kind of separated me. You know, I may not have been the most athletic or, or big or height, but I said, you know, if, if I can get to the ball faster than anybody else, then I'm going to be, you know, above somebody or, you know, I'm going to separate myself basically. And it was also just passed down, I think, you know, from the grind of having, you know, other guys in front of me like P.J. Preston and those guys when I played, yes, you know, who were just, man, phenomenal athletes. Uh, and then as the program grew, you know, and <clears throat> as we've been through the process, you know how sometimes how coaches start to evaluate kids. And as you and I both know, there's a thousand kids that play your one position, but you have to be unique. And what I told Henry was, I see constantly business owners in my banking profession and I always ask them the same thing. You know, you make widgets and everything else, but what makes your, your company different? And so what I said was this will work for you on the field and off the field. Yeah, and, and um, Henry, when you hear your dad talk about that, um, did, did, he, did he train you early on? I mean, you had your coaches. Because uh, I asked that question before you answer. I asked that question because I coach my son in AAU, but he has other guys that he gets training for. But what you see in today's sports world is a lot of overzealous parents, whether they played or not at your dad's level, trying to be the next LeVar Ball, training their, their, their kids and pushing them. You got the speed ladders and the weight room set up in the living room in the basement. What kind of <laughs> what kind of stuff did your father do for you from the physical standpoint of preparing you, or did he just kind of, uh, you know, give you gems and then let you learn on your own? How did that go? He kind of let me learn on my own. I think he only coached me probably basketball wise once. Uh, I was in fourth grade. We were playing for the elementary school, um, but he gave me a lot of stuff on my own to do because throughout this process and stuff, you, you're a lot of it is on your own. You you have your family stuff around you, but he's not out there playing with you, you know? So it's a, you're really on your own. So I feel like you have to develop this, like, a mindset um, for yourself to be responsible and for you to get your stuff done. Yeah. And I got to ask this question, you know, I, I kind of think I know the answer now, but – when y'all play one-on-one -on -one, or when's the last thing y'all play one-on-one, -on -one, who wins or is it intense? Because I don't, you know, I've never played against you, obviously, Henry. I've seen you play. I know you have another ego on that court. And your dad, and, your, and I've seen some clips and some chirping, but your dad had another ego on that field. I remember one time your dad got pushed in the back in the field house and all hell broke loose. He picked up a... <laughs> we don't go into all the details, but your dad was an animal. Did y'all go one on one, or have y'all played that, or you know? No, <laughs> like? <laughs> no man. I, you know, I have. I'll be honest, man. Uh, and I helped train Henry a little bit. I kind of gave him that foundation, and I saw something different. Or I saw a lot of me and Henry. And as he got older, you know, uh, I saw how physically he was getting. Yeah. And so what I have what I have learned, you know, they say the older you get, the, the more smarter you get. And so <laughs> what I've been doing is saying, you know, you don't want to see me, you don't want to play me, or you know, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna bring out uh, let, don't let me bring out one of those VHS tapes for you to look at, you know. So I'm using my whip tickets, man, you know. <laughs> and I'll be honest, it was probably when uh, Henry was probably about fifteen. He was playing with some of the older kids that were 17, 18 years old. And um, he did a turnaround post and two-hand dunk on this guy who was mm -hmm. getting ready to go to college. And, you know, I said right then and there, I said, man, he be the wrong man, you know. So I, I'm not going to go out there. You know, I'm going to let him take it out on them. You know, I'm going to yeah. sit back and watch. I'm going to do yeah. the smart thing, man. Uh, but, no, we haven't played, man, enough. I might, I might play a game of horse against him. Yeah, yeah. With no um, dunk, no, no dunk. No, no, no dunks, no dunks. <laughs> <laughs> no dunking. Um, Henry, 
I've asked you this before, but I want I want you to talk about it a little bit today. Um, what I admire about you is that you worked. You see, I I, I get sometimes I, I I rant and I vent about the recruiting system for both today's athlete in football and basketball because sometimes the hype seems manufactured. There's some guys I see get exposed later on, and that's not me hating on the youngins. It's more so it's not their fault. We live in an instant gratification social media generation, which is cool because it can work to your benefit. But your journey is special because you've earned a lot of all the attention you receive. When did the light bulb go off for you as far as you becoming, I can do what your dad mentioned about turning around and giving guys work and dunking on them? When, how did that process begin and when did the light bulb go off for you when that moment happened? It wasn't until about my sixth grade going into seventh grade summer. Um, I was playing a lot of AAU and I saw kind of this jump. Um, and then I returned to middle school basketball and I had some games where I was scoring 35 and 40 points. Um, and it kind of clicked for me kind of early that, you know, this, you know, this game of basketball can kind of take me, you know, somewhere. And so the next year I ended up playing JV basketball in eighth grade um, for John Marshall. Uh, and then where I played with Isaiah Todd, another top recruit. Um, and so we both kind of bounced off each other these ideas that this game can really kind of take us some somewhere. <clears throat> and then – it, it really hit me about my um, sophomore year. I started getting a ton of more attention um, and, you know, office of stuff started piling in and I had the opportunity to play with two studs, Jason Wade and Armando Baycott. Um, and those guys kind of helped groom me and show me that like it can, it really can take you places because I saw all the accolades Mondo was getting at USA you know, AP play of the year, stuff like that. Um, it just gave me something to chase. And I kind of um, took all that in. And that's just something since then I've kind of chased. Yeah. And I, I, and, and you chased it well. Um, Hank, you and your wife um, come from humble beginnings. Um, she's from the shore. And you are, you know, you from Richmond, 804. You both have risen above a lot of stuff you saw growing up. I remember when the process began for um, Henry and you never changed, never wavered. But at the same time, I remember we talked, you know, you and I are brothers and you're like a big brother to me. And I remember, I've been watching, I remember when the offers start rolling in the same way it did for my man, uh, Ant and Jalen Elliott, you know, it, it, it's just great to see. But at the same time, it had to be somewhat rewarding, but also overwhelming. I mean, it happened so fast once that light bulb went off for him and then the college coaches took notice. What was your mindset and process, you and your family, your wife? What were you thinking? Were you, were you anxious? You know, were you nervous, excited? Or was it all of it? Or how would you, why was you feeling? I think, you know, it, when you and I talked, I remember you saying, you said, uh, you know, hey, the way he's playing, what he's doing, you know, the Dukes and UNCs are becoming. And I was like, well, yeah, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> and, you know, that, that summer, I guess, his uh, after his sophomore high school season, that summer going into his junior year, <clears throat> it just really, truly took off. And it was all of that. It was the excitement. It was the um, being able to manage it, you know, um, and really sitting down with the family and having a, a group session almost weekly, sometimes as it got closer, daily, you know. And the most important thing was sitting down and asking Henry, you know, well, how are you feeling about all this? You know, we would have to get a, a debrief almost every day. Who's called you? What were they talking about? Da 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 da. And you know, for a lot of the parents out there that's gonna probably go through this process. The one thing you have to understand is that you can't rush the process. You know, uh, so many parents get caught up in trying to live vicariously through their kids and, and have their kids live out their dream when they fail, their dreams may have fallen short. But the one thing you have to do, man, is you really have to trust the process. you got to hold your family close and you got to create a small circle uh, of people that you really trust uh, and you have to be honest with your kid and yourself, you know, uh, that was something I've always done. 
uh, when it comes to both of the boys um, and just and just saying, <clears throat> you know, have them evaluate and look at film uh, and critique themselves. But the whole process, uh, it is very overwhelming. Uh, it is, uh, it can create uh, friction within the family. <laughs> Uh, you know, because you, know, you got two two competitive parents, man, uh, who who seen you know at the highest level, uh, been been a part of that. You know, same thing went to UVA, I went to Tech, uh, and and then the funny part was the guys that I either grew up with and played with or played against were now recruiting my son. That's crazy, and that just put a whole different spin on it. That's crazy. You know, uh, it, it it was it was. I was proud of my 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 fellow teammates or the guys I played with, and how far they have been in their their track and their process of being assistant coaches and things like that with major uh, schools. And then I had to kind of put the hat back on and be Henry's dad. So you know, it it was interesting, <coughs> man, and uh, but it all worked out for the best. It really did. Yeah, it did. Yeah, it did. Henry, before I ask you about uh, basketball, I do. I, I would be remiss if I didn't ask you. Your mom is a Wahoo. I know she's feeling real good. They got their first win, and <coughs> your dad is a is a proud Hokey and a former uh, football player. There, uh, you're going to Duke for basketball. Are you going to cho choose cheer for Duke football, or do you? Who do you cheer for? The Wahoos, the Hokey. Who's your favorite foot? I'm, I'm asking a hot take question. Who's your, who is your football squad? So I guess I will have to cheer for Duke football, but at heart I still am a uh, Virginia Tech football fan. Okay. Um, <laughs> nothing yes. hurt me more. Nothing hurt me more to see the Wahoos beat them uh, oh. in November, but still a hokey football fan. That's yeah. what's up. Okay. I had to get yeah. that on the record. I had to get that, yeah. Hey, Vic, uh, you know, Coach Foster always told him, he said, you much bigger and and probably better than your dad. He was like, you should come on and play for me. <laughs> hey, let me tell you something. I saw that. That's what I'm saying. When the article and people went and clicked on his, his huddle and his highlights, they were like, why is he not on the gridiron? But, I mean, that, hey, that's LeBron and a lot of guys. I mean, you go you go where your heart tells you, man. Um, but, you know, I know Bud would have had him some shit. He probably would have been illegal. But I did. <laughs> Henry's frame. But um, back to basketball, Henry. So when you talk about the offers and everything like that, um, you chose Duke, and it came down to Michigan, Ohio State, Duke, Virginia Tech. I can't remember the other school. Um, what's the other one? NC State. NC State. You chose Duke. Um, I, I was born at Duke. Um, I've always loved their program. Um, I loved all the programs you mentioned. I thought Michigan um, had a great thing going, has a great thing going too with Howard, Coach Howard. But um, a lot of people in the recruiting circuit thought at one time you were going to head to your mother's alma mater. Um, how did that get about? How did UVA fall out and how did you end up at Duke? Oh, uh, for me, it was you know, kind of recognizing where I, you know, would fit in the best basketball and also uh, court. Uh, UVA and Coach Bennett and Coach Williford recruited me hard. And they had an unbelievable program over there. Um, I know some of the incoming guys, Carson, uh, Jabri, uh, Reese Beekman, some unbelievable basketball players. But Duke really spoke to me. Um, and Coach K and I developed an unbelievable bond. And honestly, what really kind of took me over the edge was the, some of the guys that already committed or some of the players there really hitting, you know, hitting me up, texting me, uh, calling in, checking in. You know, it really showed that they wanted me to be a part of, you know, their brotherhood and, that, and their program at the time. Yeah, and it is special. The brotherhood is special. I, I can speak to it from a football sense with, you know, being tight with your dad and so many guys we played with and the guys that even came before me. Um, when you were getting recruited, and those are some powerhouse schools calling you, and that's just the ones you narrowed it down to. Coach Billy at UVA and Coach Young came in. All these guys have great programs. Um, how was your mother and father helping you, with, even your brother? Like, how did everybody, your immediate family, help you make that decision? Was it 
um, an evaluation process? Did it like, you know, you pros and cons? I'm just asking that for kids that may see this video, even parents that may go through the process after you. It's something that you yourself, like my dad was saying earlier, have to be honest uh, with yourself about. Um, and f like you said, figuring out the pros and cons of this uh, school. And what I think a lot of people will sometimes focus too much on is the basketball or the sports part. You have to realize that that's only basketball or football, you know, it's only three months and you're there the rest of that time. So how can you, you know, or how do you fit into the surrounding area, the society there? Um, and that's what I thought Duke really kind of spoke to me um, about. Like, it was just something that I wanted to be a part of. I, the brotherhood itself is great, yes, but I wanted to be, you know, a part of Duke. You know, they have such a, you know, long line of, you know, alumni that are just unbelievable in the work field, you know, work in the White House or CEOs of large corporations. That's something that, you know, basketball, the basketball, you know, will stop bouncing. You will stop playing at some point. So being a part of, you know, such a great school, it just, you know, speaks wonders. Yeah, and Hank, when he, when you guys, because um, I remember when I posted that article, article, it came out the Friday, ironically, Virginia Tech was playing Duke in football that night. And then the announcement was prior to, and we didn't even coordinate that. It just worked out that way. Um, when you guys, you know, took off and showed the shirts, um, I know you're going to ride with your son the same way, you know, and roll with Jalen choosing Notre Dame. Did people hit you up, hey, like Hokie Nation, like, bro, what is it? You know, even though Virginia Tech is building a basketball program, Buzz has created, you know, a lot of stuff, and Mike Young has done a great job coming in. Were people part of Hokie Nation like, oh, man, not do, you know, like. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was uh, it was funny. You know, we went through the process um, and it was some evaluation pieces to that. And, you know, for the parents that are out there, it's great to go through it. I mean, you really have to take a deep dive into looking at uh, who's going to be coming in, who's already there, the coaching. Uh, you know, we look at the sports piece. But the one thing I told Henry was, it was two things, actually. I said, you know, you have to, every school you go to, you have to picture yourself and ask yourself one question. If I wasn't playing any sports, would I consider coming here? And the second thing I told him was, when you get on that campus, it's hard to describe, but you're going to have a certain feeling in your gut, you know. And so doing true. That's so true. Approach. And when he ultimately made the decision, you know, I, I had I got some some text messages, I got some tweets, um, and it was mixed. <clears throat> you know, some understood. Uh, you know, uh, because Mike Young, they did a great job. Christian Webster uh, needs to be a head coach somewhere. Unbelievable recruiter, man, at Virginia Tech, and and we thank the world of Coach Young, and you know the things that they're becoming. Uh, and for us, once Henry made that decision, you know, we, uh, as a parent, definitely supported him. And I asked him kind of, what you asked him, why? You know, and he, he laid out a lot of different pros uh, or comments about why. And it all made sense to us, to us. And at the end, you know, I think a lot of people understood. I'm going to always bleed on to Maroon. Uh, but, you know, I have my son, Henry Coleman III, and, you know, he's going to carry on the name and the tradition, um, you know. And so it was just interesting that I think, honestly, my wife got more almost hate mail or hate texts. Oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, because that, I yeah. mentioned that. A lot of people thought he was going to be a Wahoo before he made his top five. And even yeah. when he made his top five, um, people were like, you know, talking about, you know, UVA and, right. and they and, right. and, and, and they had just won a national championship. They had just won a national championship, <laughs> you know, and we had set up our plan and, and, and Coach Ben and everybody was on board with, you know, we gave my timeline always up front. And I think from a business perspective, you know, they had their offers out there and they had some kids who were ready to commit. And so that kind of left to a degree. Uh, I think everybody knew because it kind of hit the paper that they had no more 2020 scholarships available. So, you know, the one thing I can tell parents too is that as you get these offers and you go, well, how do you break it down to 10? 
a lot of schools will eventually take themselves out, whether it be no more scholarships available, um, school may have some things coming up through the institution changes. Thing. Yeah, so coaching changes, things like that. And so they're going to weed themselves out. And it's through the recruiting process. Who's calling you on a consistent basis and things like that. So, uh, but no, man, it, it was all good. And, uh, you know, I still follow my, my Hokie brothers and uh, I'm pushing for them, you know, every time. But here we had some very close friends on the basketball team of g Tech, Jalen Cone, you know, yeah, matter of fact. Is it? That's your friend? Yeah, we're super close. He's an animal. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he can shoot yeah. It. yeah, he can shoot it. Yeah. yeah. So, so, you know, all of those guys used to play together and they would come stay with us when, right before we would hit the road for a tournament. So, you know, a lot of those guys, man, Henry, he, he knows, we know their family. So it, it was a tough decision. And, uh, you know, but again, I think, you know, he made a great choice and uh, we're looking forward to it. Yeah, and it's going to be really fun. Um, you know, when I look at you getting ready to go to Duke and be part of the legacy that is, you know, the brotherhood, the Blue Devil Nation and everything like that, Henry, it is a special situation and it's a blessing. But at the same time, what I find unique about you is um, you are very insightful. You have plans to uh, obviously further your career after Duke and hopefully go into the NBA, but you also want to, you have some a profession you want to go into. You want to talk a little bit about that when basketball ends or as you prepare? Yeah, so, I mean, like any other kid, my mind has gone all over the place uh, between what I want to do and what I want to study. But, I mean, I really like the, you know, the manage, management part of just sports in general. I'm somebody who, like, I watch a ton of different variety of sports. I, you know, sometimes I turn on golf. I'll sometimes turn on baseball, football, whatever it is. It's just I love that competitive nature. So just trying to find somewhere after basketball um, in the athletics, um, just, you know, helping people out. But it's something that I think Duke can help me. Uh, prepare for. Um, if you look at Coach K's coaching tree, it's probably the best in college college basketball. So it's just something that I think down the road will help me. Absolutely. And I follow you on Twitter and you talk about competition and people who you know. This is one thing. I saw you in Trinity. Um, I saw you play there. You know, um, my good friend and Hank's good friend, uh, Aaron, has nep his nephew, Jason, uh, Jason Wade, who you played with, who's not at ODU. And I saw you and Mondo and all you guys going back and forth. And then I think, I, I know, I'm paraphrasing here, but I think you or Mondo said, well, I guess we rivals now. So, yeah. So, so one thing I'm looking forward to just as a fan is seeing you guys, I, I, I know y'all battled in practice, but is he ready? Is he ready for, if, if you, when you play and get on the court, is he ready for you? Are you, are you? <laughs> I'm not trying to get a hot take right now. I'm saying competition-wise, are you ready to battle him? He had a good career. I'm um, good first year at uh, UNC. Yeah, and we talk, we joke about it, and we talk at, talk about it all the time. Actually, we were on the phone last night, not even talking about but we were talking about Call of Duty. But it's just that connection um, that we have. Um, it, it's just going to be a fun time because many of my teammates that I've played with or played against will be in the ACC. Um, a team, team loaded team from about two years ago. Mark Williams was on the team, who's actually becoming the Duke of me. Jalen Cohn was a point guard who'd been AC playing at Virginia Tech, and then Earl Timberlake was a, the shooting guard who will be playing at Miami. So it's just going to be, you know, competitive, really competitive, because those guys, you know, are competitive in general, just like me. But it's also going to be fun at the same time to kind of show that, you know, we all made it together. Yeah. So it's going to yeah. be fun. And it is going to be fun. I know I, you being you know, articulate and professional, but I know that dog's going to come out. Because I seen the clip one time when you banged on somebody, you turned around and said, you too small, bro. <laughs> 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 and I rewound it like four times. Last, I'm watching it by myself. I'm, I guess, <laughs> to me, I can't do that stuff no more. I can never do that. But I, I don't play no more. And I love seeing that. That's part of the game. That's one thing I'm glad to hear a young man like yourself say. It's not personal. We just competing. Um, yeah. You know, but, you know, well, Hank, well, you know, now having your son at Duke and getting ready to go to Duke um, in college and, and, and at that level, 
Um, what are some of the things you're looking forward to as a parent? You know, a lot of times we don't get the same advantage. You know, we play, we are in the moment we're playing. Now you're a dad and he's going to be playing on the ACC network and playing um, against the guys he mentioned, the UNCs and the Virginia Techs and the Miamis and even out of conference plays, Michigan State. Has it hit you? Has it hit you um, in regards to um, phone sideways a little bit? Uh, my bad. Phone's dying. Okay. I'll wait. Okay. Has it hit you in regards to um, him seeing him and Cameron? And uh, are you looking forward to it, you and Cynthia, your wife? Yeah, man. I, it's, it's uh, you know. Well, oh, it's okay. You're fine. It's uh, it's just one of those things. Oh man, I don't know. <laughs> Let me see. My fault. It's okay. Phone a little technical. I'm sorry, we good. There we go. Uh, yeah, no, it's 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 one of those things that uh, I'm you know living for the moment to be able to see him, you know, have his name on God deal with the jersey on. You know, it's all becoming you know full circle and so surreal. You know, and I always tell Coach Beamer I appreciate what he did for me so I could get my son to this level, you know, and being able to pass that on. And that's something we always talk about. And so it is exciting uh, to see that, uh, you know, even my mom is and, and Cynthia's mom, you know, are getting excited. You know, they had to make sure they had the ACC network and all this stuff on their table, you know. And so we're just getting prepared for that. And, uh, you know, man, I think it's something, too, to see his hard work pay off for this chapter in his life. And uh, I think the sky's the limit. And we always tell him that, that, you know, if you put your mind to it, you can accomplish it. And uh, I, I have no doubt that uh, he'll have a successful career at Duke. And uh, he'll go on to the next level and play, man. Uh, you know, and when we always talk about, you know, other options, I think he one day will make a, a professional organization a great GM. Or if he wants to go on the other side and either own his own business or take over as a CEO of a company, uh, I think he has that capability. It's just, you know, following the process and preparing himself for, for that afterwards. Well, phone. Okay. Yeah. So, Henry, um, you mentioned um, who you play with, you know, Cone and all those guys, Armando and Jason Wade. Um, who are some of the guys, I found this question and your answer, your answer more so than the question, very intriguing when you told me this a, a while back. Players that you admire and enjoy watching um, and that you model your game after, not necessarily, you know, the physicality, but just their basketball IQ. Who are some of those players um, that you will watch and check for that you, 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 you model your game after, not just physically, but mentally? <laughs> I mean, there are a variety of guys. Uh, some guys I've looked at now a lot of are Kawhi Leonard is a person who he's so simple. Um, a lot of people, you know, nowadays it's 10 moves to get to this one shot. Kawhi is such a perfect example of a guy who's very simple, one dribble, pull up, jab, get to the, get to the lane, uh, dunk on somebody. He's a guy that, you know, he's perfectionist at what he does, but it's super simple. Um, another person is Draymond Green, somebody who's, kind of undersized, but his mindset is some something that I've kind of taken um, into account because he's he, he plays mind games with people, man. You know, he is really 6'5", you know, 6'6", six, six, and he's, you know, dominating guys that are seven feet. You know, something that we, we don't see a lot. But somebody who I've – my dad knows is – he's not even a uh, basketball player, but that I admire is Tom Brady. His will to win <clears> – <throat> is something that, you know, you, you really don't see a, lot, uh, see a lot. I was watching sports in this morning, and um, a couple of his old teammates were on there, and they were talking about Tom, and they were saying he's, he has, like, this MJ-like mindset. Um, and his ability to win 
with anybody around him and his ability to make people better around him is just something that, you know, I've kind of taken in. Well, look, I'm a big Brady fan too, and I'm not a Patriots fan. And um, here's the deal, and I'm glad, and you're built for it. You like Brady, you, you admire him, and now you're at Duke, so hopefully you're ready for the hate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The hate, when you look, I, I've tweeted that you, I, I say this on Twitter all the time. I've tweeted this, I've said this on radio interviews I've done. When you are winning and you are relevant all the time, you know, Lakers during their run, the Patriots run their dynasty, which lasted pretty much 20 years, Brady, Duke Blue Devils, um, Kentucky basketball, but Duke's really the hated program. Uh, the Spurs during their run, UConn women basketball. When you win all the time, you're going to be hated. So I don't know if you're ready. I, I, I heard Quinn Cook talk about that one day, and he was like, I love it. You know, yeah. are, you, are you ready for that? Not just booze, but like random fans coming on your Twitter feed just trying to <laughs> tag you or something, you know, when you give them 16 and 10. Are you ready for that? Yeah, it's something that, you know, a lot of people can say they're ready for, but even when it does hit you, you're still going to be shocked. You're going to be like, you know, they're grown people tearing me down. I'm 18 just trying to play <laughs> basketball in college. You know, but it's something that throughout this whole process, you kind of have seen on a small level. Um, and it's something that, like, you know, you're going to have to deal with. And if you want to be a professional athlete and play at the level that you want to play at, you're going to have to learn how to deal with it. It's something that's going to come with it. So I'm ready. Sure, sure. Uh, you know, Hank, are you ready for it? Because, see, what people don't realize is, you know, with Mike, I'm his cousin. I ain't never thrown a touchdown pass or anything like that, but – I've learned over the years when he was playing, I stopped tweeting or saying certain things because trolls will come from anywhere. Oh yeah, uh, are you and, are you and Cynthia ready for that? You know. Yeah, I, I, um, you know, I think I'm ready for it. We're working on it with his mom and auntie, her sister, because man, you know. But the reality of it is, I tell Henry is first of all. Don't get caught up in reading your own paper clippings. That's that's the old saying for when you and I didn't have Twitter when we were yeah. playing. It was newspapers, right? You know, and so the other thing was, I said, you know, understand, you know, people are gonna love you when you're up, and some people are gonna want to try to tear you down when you're up. And so one of the things you have to do is keep your circle small and know your own value and your own worth, you know. And as long as you can get up every morning and look in the mirror and like who you see as an individual, nothing else matters, you know. And, and that's what I want him to take with him. Uh, not just with the Duke perspective, but also in life, you know, as well. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for that, man, uh, and it's going to be hard. It, and, I, I, and, you know, we have been at a weight game. I've heard people uh, say different things. Uh, you know, we I remember when Henry was in the sixth grade, man, we had to get him a, a, a DMV ID because people thought he was too old. And, well, I believe that. You know, <laughs> and, and as he got older and was playing, I mean, and, and so what I would do is I would just get up and go watch the game from somewhere else, uh, you know. And so from away games or other things, you know, uh, I told his mom the other day, I said, the day he leaves for Duke, I'm probably going to get off Twitter and IG and all the rest of that stuff. Because <laughs> it's just going to fuel it. It's just going to fuel it. But, uh, you know, and this was important when he was talking about going to Duke. And I said, I understand – it's not just about going there and playing there. It's going to be everything else that comes with it, the good and the bad. And I said, really think hard about that. Uh, and those are some of the, the, the pieces that, as a parent, you go through and help your, your, your son, your kid evaluate. Because not everything is going to be a bed of roses. You know, if you can remember our 95 team for football, we were projected <coughs> to win everything. And we started 0-2. Yes. So, you know, so it's, it's going to be <laughs> – you're going to have some days like that. But at the end of the day, it's about you and your teammates. And, you know, y'all can keep that close-knit uh, communication and relationship. You know, the rest of that stuff doesn't matter. Absolutely. Um, just a few more questions. Henry, what are you doing – I mean, we got this quarantine. I mean, it's modified now. They're in phase one, effective today in Virginia. At the same time, you got to be safe. Uh, I know what my son and other some of my players are doing. What is your training regimen right now? Um, are you working out, um, watching film, 
Are you staying mentally sharp? What are you doing uh, to stay connected to basketball? So definitely one thing I've been doing is, like you said, staying mentally strong, staying up to date with, you know, my position, what's going on. So I've been watching a ton of film from games, you know, from a couple of years ago and then some ga- some film from games this year. Um, but also breaking down certain basketball players over this time period. Uh, but physically, I've been running every day, doing core stuff, workouts. Um, but I'm just starting to get back into the gym. Um, so that's been pretty good. Uh, but yeah, just kind of staying ready. I think that's the biggest thing that we can do now is just in these, you know, different times is try to stay ready. As, as Coach K or Nolan Smith or any of those guys reached out to you and the team, the incoming freshmen, virtual workouts or Zoom meetings or anything like that? Yeah, I talk to coaches all the time, uh, just about, you know, general conversation. I'm um, just touching on life and stuff and how stuff is. Okay, good. So, um, Hank, your son, your other son, your younger one, that's going to be what, six, he's going to be six, 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 seven, two. Yeah. Uh, how old is he? And, 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 and Henry, this is a question for both you guys. Is he on that same trajectory? Is he on that same path that you are? And is he focused and driven as well? Yeah, I think now really starting to get it. He's seen my success, and I think it's something that he wants to achieve. Um, but everybody grows different. Um, he's a totally different player than I was and totally different person that I, that, uh, I am. So it's just something, that, you know, that he's going to be different. I think that for him, he's going to receive, a, you know, a good amount of hate and stuff because he is playing. You know, he's a younger brother of a uh, Duke basketball player. So with him, I think it's something that, he is capable of doing is something that he can achieve, but I think he'll be an unbelievable player. Yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah, your he, thoughts on it? Yeah, I mean, you know, it was it was it's interesting. Like Henry said, everybody's different, and I think parents need to just realize that uh, because with Henry, we saw it early on in his development and his commitment to it. Uh, with Leland, um, he grew seven inches in one year this past year. <laughs> so, so it's, uh, it's, it's different because, you know, it was like this big puppy or you see a great Dane and all of a sudden it just broke. And so he was trying to get used to his limbs, uh, you know, and so he's more of a guard. Uh, to me, he's he plays probably more of a um, – who are we talking about? The kid who played at uh, Missouri, um, Michael Porter. Michael Porter oh, type. Oh, okay, because he's long, lanky, uh, you know. And you know, it's interesting because we know little brothers. They don't like to watch the older brother, but they really are. Yeah, and you'll see little hints of things that Henry has been doing, and then all of a sudden, Leland is just doing. You know, he'll get mad and he'll do them right quick, you know, when you see him play. And so, you know, he's developing. And one thing I can say with Henry has done a lot of is is really work with his little brother, um, taking with him when he trains and that sort of thing. Uh, and we, the one thing we never do as parents, we never say to Leland, you need to do what Henry's doing or, or play like Henry. You yeah. know, we, we always let them um, – Really, my wife is very good at this. You know, we always let them follow their own path, uh, develop at their own pace, you know. Uh, and like Henry said, I think now he has seen bits and, and spurts of his success uh, being the little brother. And as you talk about, is his mom and I ready for uh, this whole Duke experience? You know, as a family, we actually said, like, okay, are we really ready for all of this? You know, and it was his little brother who we were more, I think, um, impressed with because he was the one that said, you know what? Yeah, I get the messages on IG and all this other stuff. And he's like, I'm fine with it. If that's where Henry wants to go, you know, he's, he's in full support. And so that was the funny part about it, man, because the little brother was the one who was saying, yeah, I'm ready for all the, you know, the big target on my back and all the rest. And so, but he's developing well, man. And so it's a shame that we're going to kind of miss this AAU season uh, for his development. Uh, but both of them are working out and running, 
is something I never really did. I mean, I had to commend both of them, man. I worked out for these cats workout. I mean, yeah, they, yeah. They, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they really get after it, man. And so, uh, you know, I, I just sit back and I'm amazed. And, you know, it's it's a sacrifice sometimes for the parents on the outside because, you know, you leave them work, uh, you're spending your weekends, you know, you might need some new shoes, but they need some shoes, you know. It's, it's interesting, man. And uh, But the other fact is that it's helped my wife and I stay in shape too, you know, because we're walking, running, you know, and stuff like that. They have their diets and we, we stick with their diets. Although, man, these cats can eat. You know? Yeah, I know. I know. I got to, after I'm done with this, I got to stop by the store. Right. They're going through it. They're going through so, it. <laughs> you know, so you try to take it all as a positive. And, uh, but we're, we're excited for his little brother, man. I mean, you know, uh, to, to see him grow seven inches in one year and the doctor said, hey, he's not finished. Uh, Henry grew another two inches. So, you know, it, it's, um, it's interesting. It, it really is. And, man, I'm excited for both of them. Yeah, and just a warning, Henry, it's coming if it hasn't already started. When he really, when he really feeling, he gonna he gonna give you, he gonna try to give you some smoke. He gonna, I know. He gonna, he gonna try to come at you. That's why that younger brother, you gonna you gonna come home your sophomore year from Duke or whatever or in the NBA. He gonna be like, "What's up?" He gonna roll the ball to you like in loving basketball. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. I got, I, I, but but all that's a blessing, man. Before I ask my last question, I'm just gonna tell you this, Hank. You know, uh, my wife and I, and even people in our circle, we learn so much from y'all. We respect y'all grind, y'all sacrifice. Um, and I think it's important to have more fathers and mothers like what you're doing, not just about the sports, investing time, but just seeing the big picture, keeping your children humble, invested in their goals, not just sports, but just going beyond the, the landscape of sports, thinking more like a leader than just an athlete is essential. And I think that's why every time I talk to Henry, even when I watch him play in other interviews, I see him talk, you're doing a great job. But that is something that does get lost in this instant gratification generation we live in. Uh, with that being said, Henry, I'm going to give you the uh, opportunity first. If you were talking to a group of kids right now, which you, you probably will because I'm going to post this, people are going to see this. Uh, there's a young man or young woman coming up right now and she's trying to get to where you're going. What advice would you give him or her to achieve their academic and athletic goals? I think, I mean, there are a ton of things. I think one thing that I've kind of, you know, just believed in li listening to great people, great influence, great influencers, um, is be the best version of you. Um, and that's something that a guy that I kind of read a lot about or watch a lot of video of is Steve Jobs. He talked about being the best version of him and how he wanted Apple to be the best version of Apple. He never compared it to any other any any other business or any or he never compared himself to any other person. I think that's the biggest thing in this new age that you know everybody's being compared. Every business, every person, every team. Um, and I said, I think if you are the best version of you, then you will get everything that you want and all of the goals that you have set for yourself. And for me, I think that was something that I realized at a young age, that if I can be the best version of Henry Coleman, that I, I can achieve all these goals. And then when you start achieving those goals, you start to realize that, that you could be, that you are becoming the best version of yourself. And so that's something that I think that you really, you know, need to ingrain in your memory that you can't get caught up in this guy has sent offers. I have one. So, you know, I, I'm not, I'm not there yet. You're going to get there. It's just whether it's just the time factor when, you know, when you will start to get there. So it's just something that, you know, that I've kind of embodied. Yeah. Hey, if you were talking to young men, young women, student athletes that want to achieve their academic and athletic goals and even parents, that are trying to support their kids, what feedback would you give them? But well, it's hard to follow up at the end, man. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, a great answer. <laughs> you, know, but, um, you know, I think one of the most important things we've touched on it earlier, and that's uh, don't rush your process. You know, uh, all you can do is control you. And by working hard, 
and then surrounding yourself with like-minded people who want the same goals and similar aspirations, I think will help deter from all the other negativity, you know. And then the one thing that I think a lot of kids and parents need to understand that it's not a microwave fix, you know, it's just not gonna happen overnight. Uh, you know, people don't understand uh, going and working out at 5 a.m., then going to school, you know, or you have to get up on your own and run two or three miles before you go to practice or stay after practice and, you know, work on your, your footwork or whatever your, your game is. You can be a tennis player, uh, you know, and that sort of thing. So putting in your, your time, and one thing that uh, a lot of kids and parents need to understand is that, you know, you can't ask a coach who's going to coach your kid for an hour and a half, two hours, and they're supposed to be, you know, LeBron James, Michael Jordan, you know, Muhammad Ali. You have to do things on your own, you know, um, uh, Pete Sampras, you know. You've got to want to put that time in. And if, as a parent, if I've got to make you get up and go to practice and do all of that, then, you know what, maybe your heart of passion isn't quite there yet. You know, and, and him and I, we had this discussion early on. You know, when, when he started, I said, hey, if you want to play rec ball and let them be in, I'm cool with that. You know, but if you want to go to the next level, these are some of the things you're going to have to do. And I think as parents, uh, we have to, again, be honest with ourselves and honest with our kids. And the other thing is, is, you know, you have to stay committed to something. You know, uh, so many parents or kids, because they don't have these offers, they listen to other folks and they'll jump a team and go here and go there. You know, if you play hard and do what you're supposed to do, you will get found. You will get the opportunities that you need. I'm a living example of that, you know, from inner city school, you know, uh, where the coaches were, were scared to come to my high school to recruit me. You know, <laughs> so until Frank, until Frank Beamer walked in there, I was like, hey, I'm here to see Hank Coleman. You know, and I think that that goes a long way. Uh, and, and these are the same things I would say to a kid who doesn't want to be a, a, a college athlete. You know, just being a, a good person, you know, I think is going to go a long way if you work hard and stay committed. And I guess the last thing is, is just to, you have to fulfill your academic standards, but go beyond that. You know, if, if, it's, if it's a 2-0, you need a 3 or shoot for a 2-5. You just mm -hmm. can't be normal and be satisfied, you know, uh, in doing that. And, and again, man, you, you, it's what Coach Elmation taught us a long time ago. And that was to stay green and growing. And once you think you're right, you're going to rock. You know, I call it the banana, you know, theory. You know, because it's so true. So many kids think they're all this, and all of a sudden they go to college, they find out everybody was an all-star. <laughs> everybody was an all-American. You know, everybody ran a, a five-flat or a four-two or whatever the case was. You know, and that's what, that's what life is going to be about, though. It's going to be a very competitive uh, situation wherever, wherever you go. And so I think those are just some of the things I would pass along to a parent you know, be honest with your kid, follow the process, you know, and do as much reading and back end work. You know, so many people think that you just, you know, I'll take them here and this guy train, this guy, da, da, da. You got to make sure that that trainer is the right trainer for your, your child. You mm -hmm. know, even with Henry, I was working him out early on, but it got to the point where I was like, okay, I, I'm taking you far enough, you know, from what I know, you know, um, and now let's, turn you over to somebody else that, you know, so we did our background, our due diligence, you know, and you just don't trust one person. You really got to, you know, work at it as a family. Yep. That's, the That's the key. Yeah. Well, that was excellent and well said, man. And I just want to thank you both for jumping on the Legacy Spotlight. Um, I know I'm going to be talking to you both. I look forward to seeing you. Henry and that Duke Blue Devil uniform putting in work, man. Stay focused, stay humble, and keep working hard. Hank, I, once again, I salute you and Cynthia. I can't wait to see the next legacy, Coleman, do his thing. Um, but with that being said, to everybody that watched this and checked this out, man, 
no matter where you go, no matter what you do, make sure you leave a positive impact and you leave a legacy. Have a good one. Absolutely. Thanks, Vic, man. Appreciate you. Proud of you. Thank you.